London. It's intimidating. This is the city is the city is huge. I sorry, no, I'm not talking to you. No, sorry, hold on. I mean, have you seen this city? It's nuts. It's huge. It's expansive. It it's 600 square miles. Paris, central Paris is only 40 square miles. 600 square miles. Just London. There's so much to I, I'm so excited to be here. To be fair, the greater Paris area is fairly large, but when you look at like population density as well, this is a stat I don't I don't I do not understand. So get this, if the population of London is 8.7 million over 600 square miles or about 1500 square kilometers, that puts you at 5518 inhabitants per square meter. Which makes no sense to me. Is there where cuz that like how is there a column of human beings somewhere that I'm not seeing? I know there's some skyscrapers, like high rises behind me that might be full of people, but it doesn't, Paris is more bananas than that because Paris is 40 square miles, which is significantly smaller. That is an order of magnitude plus smaller and 2.2 million people. That puts it somehow at 21,000 inhabitants per square meter. That, how? That, that, that just, it's still, I, somebody, can somebody explain this to me? Because this doesn't make sense. This doesn't actually, fit into my brain, where are all the people? <laughs> okay, so I finally went and did the math myself because it's, it's been bothering me ever since I, I recorded this. Like, legitimately, how is this possible? It's not per square meter, it's per square kilometer. The source that I had, had a typo. I did the math myself. The numbers were right, it's just it's not per square meter, it's per square kilometer. And there are a million square meters in every square kilometer, so it suddenly makes sense. Now I know, sort of where all the people are, but that does not answer all my questions. Why don't we have more markets like this in Paris? Why do, why do no stores seem to have licenses in this city? What am I doing with my life? Wait, what? Yeah. Why am I here? This background is terrible, let's not do this. Oh. I feel like my free time vlog was a point of confusion for some people and Understandably, because I think I'm, I have been a little confused for a while now. I finally figured out what it was. I think, at least I think I know what the core element of it is, but thank you so much. <laughs> I couldn't come to London and not get a sausage roll. I mean, although I'm supposed to try haggis, my patrons, my patrons have voted and they want, they want me to try haggis. If you'd like to vote on random stuff that I eat while I'm traveling, because we're getting back into doing that here soon too, haggis. I think it's happening in this video. Anyways, so why London? Yeah, that's actually a good question. <laughs> so there are two things that have really stood out to me, and I think London might be part of the solution uh, in, in both instances. But it's interesting because it feels like everything is coming together right now in a way where I've been lost. Not just lost in London, which is not hard to do because this place is huge and amazing and overwhelming and incredible all at once, but generally lost, which is something that if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you're probably very aware, like Jay wandering around just a little bit directionless in life. And it's come from kind of a couple of different reasons, but I realized through this business coaching that Jeff and I started recently, the coach pinpointed something, not even directly to me, I was watching a recording, but pinpointed something that is exactly my problem. And that is that I'm kind of missing my North Star right now, my direction, the thing that drives me forward. And that's been the case for a while. When I was growing up, I had my faith. I had the cultural bounds of where I was trying to go, the dreams that I had for making movies and things like that. That acted very much as a North Star for me. That drove me to see the world, to write, to do so much of what I've done in my life. And when I started vlogging, there was, there was a twofold kind of North Star there where for one, I was you know launching a company and had a couple of book deals on the table and really thought something was gonna happen. So vlogging for me was a way of sharing those stories as I went, but also it was a lifeline. Like the, the main thrust of my daily vlogging days was survival. Was I gonna make it or wasn't I? And I, I didn't really know. I don't know if anybody knew for a long time there. And then as that went away, like things, things really changed. Am I supposed to just eat this actually like straight up, just like a pastry and realizing maybe I'm doing this wrong? Let me know in the comments, British people, are you supposed to just eat these like this? That's kind of it. I'm trying to get back to the mojo, right? I'm trying to figure out where is it that I'm my strongest? Where am I more creative? Where am I more energetic? And part of that has to do with exploring, going to new places, finding new things. In London, if nothing else, has a corner on the market of lots to explore. So many new things. I don't even know how to approach this place, which is actually kind of, it's both intimidating, like it actually is, like how, how do you even begin? I will say I, I have fallen, I've definitely fallen for uh, shortage. Spitalfields ain't bad either. 
It's pretty great, actually. And the coaching has been really helpful. I'm really excited. It's going to be a crazy year, but I'll also admit I haven't exactly figured out what my North Star is again yet, although we're getting really close. But the thing that's been possibly the most helpful through this whole period of transition and figuring out kind of who I am again has been the partnership that I've found in therapy, which will come as no surprise if you've been watching for a while and also segues well into the sponsor of this video because therapy, much like coaching, is one of those things that I've known I should do for a long time but didn't get on top of it as quickly as I wish I had now that I'm in it. And I'm so grateful that I did when I did. It's been years now that I've been going to therapy and I realize that it's not always the most accessible thing for everybody, which is why I'm really glad that BetterHelp is sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is a platform that connects you to therapists all around the world with just a couple of clicks you answer some questions about yourself, what you're looking for, you schedule a call. And the cool thing is that you can talk by text, by call, by video. And if you don't click with that therapist on the first go, you can always try somebody else. They make it really easy, guilt-free, and simple to move on and try a new therapist until you find one that you really click with, which is really important. Much like the coach that we found, we love him because we click with him so well. My therapist is somebody that I've really come to love because she's just right for me. And that would be what I would hope for anyone out there who's thinking about getting therapy. Not only do you deserve it, but you deserve to be with somebody that you really, really gel with. Give BetterHelp a try at betterhelp.com slash jswanson. They'll give you 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash jswanson. It helps the channel. They've been very supportive of me and everything that I've been doing, which is great because they need all the support I can get, especially on, uh, on rough travel days, uh, rough travel days that I did to myself. I don't know what I was, I, I was doing so well. I was on a really good streak of like timing everything really well, like getting good plane tickets that didn't require me to wake up early. And then this Eurostar, 7.26 in the morning? What was I think, why? Because apparently in the fugue state that I was in when I booked this whole trip, I got an Airbnb that doesn't let you in, doesn't check you in until 4 p.m. So I got in at nine and anyways, check the luggage. Thankfully, with a jacket, I'm ready for double bacon knot. Ah, the house chai is really good too. Yes. I mean, this is also not a bad way to make it through the day, let's be honest. No sleep, 5.30 start in the morning. Space Invaders to get you through. Yes! <laughs> I actually managed to stop for once. Usually my weakness when I'm exploring, especially if I'm hunting for space invaders, which I think is a really good way to explore any city, to be honest, uh, is that I, I, don't, I don't stop. Suddenly you find yourself like exhausted and cranky and just like dying. And realize you haven't eaten for like three hours past when you probably should have had lunch. So I'm proud of myself, but it helped when I saw this place because I recognize the name and I think it's the same restaurant. I don't know where they started, but they just opened one of these in Paris and it's super, super good. I was like, all right. Korean for lunch. Sounds great. I think this is my fourth or fifth cup of coffee for the day. I tried a place earlier uh, that was not good. This place is great. The place I tried earlier, very friendly. Let me use their toilet. They're very nice. I was craving something more like this though. There's so many places to try in this city. It's nuts. Well, this place is awesome. <laughs> I think this might be the nicest Airbnb, I mean, just from the first look, the nicest Airbnb that I've been in in the last month. Maybe the nicest place I've been in the last month. This is, ooh, the, there's a tub, separate bedroom. There's a balcony. The kitchen is almost the size of my whole apartment. I think we're gonna be just fine. Ooh, it's hot. These are so, I officially love these doors so much. What the heck, I've never seen anything like that. Uh, well.
25 minutes. So in this coaching program, our coach has five daily non-negotiables that we have to act on every day if we're gonna be in compliance. And I'm doing my best to actually do this. The five of them are we need to renew a review. We renew as well, but we need to review our annual goals every day, three to five times a day. So I'm pulling out my phone. I have a, a picture of them on my phone. I'm looking at them. We're gonna talk about this more because I keep thinking about them and refining them, but I'm gonna tell you what those goals are because I think they're really important and they tie into the channel, to you, to what's going on here. And I, I think that'll be really good. The second one is you have to break a sweat every day, 45 minutes, get out there, break a sweat. It can be a long walk, run five miles, do whatever it is. The third is to feed your mind, to read 10 pages of nonfiction a day. So you can see there's a tie into like a 75 hard mentality here, but gotta be reading that nonfiction. The fourth is to have five opens every day. So to reach out to five different people every day, five new people, just to open conversations. And then the fifth one was to show your work, which may sound easy for me because I'm posting on Instagram every day, just fine. But it also came with a recommendation to read a book by the same name, Show Your Work, by Austin Cleon and, or Cleon, Cleon? He will probably never see this, so hopefully I have not just offended him, but I picked it up on Kindle. I read it last night, like I read the whole thing. It was exactly what I needed to read, which will come as a great relief to my friend Allison, who hung out with me uh, the other day and got to put up with Existential J struggling uh, way too much. But I wanted to share with you one of the main takeaways that I had from it, and I, it just doesn't feel right to do it from a Kindle, so that, let's go find it. There are a lot of bookstores in this city. I mean, it, it can't be that hard. Can I ask if you could look up a book for me really quick? Uh, show Your Work by Austin Cleon. No? Man, nobody has it. He wrote the book Steal Like an Artist. But then it's this. Okay. Austin Cleon. Okay. So, we don't have it in stock, but I can check to see if other ones. That'd be great. The closest, I'll the best bet, is Gow Street. Okay. Which is right by Euston Station. Okay, yeah. No one has this book, even Waterstones. At least this one didn't, but he found one that does. I think I've been to four or five bookstores now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. Very helpful, worth it. I know I can be pretty hard on myself. I'm my own worst critic by far, my own worst enemy. I think all of us are to some degree, but I've really been struggling with this sense the last year of my own mediocrity which is one of the reasons why actually this book was so incredibly helpful. We're gonna get there, eventually we're gonna get there. It's, I've tried like five or six bookstores, we're going to, we're, we're going to find it. This country invented the language, they should, where, where are all the books? My whole plan was to stay in East London this whole trip. Like, I wanted to really focus on just one neighborhood, but I'm gonna find this book, I'm dedicated. Um, so we're upstairs on the second floor. Okay. In our like learning careers, business kind of section. Which we'll okay, great. Thank you very much. I love this little bookstore. Well, you spot it before I do. I thought it'd be easier to spot because of the yellow cover, but apparently every book has a yellow cover now. Like this is just, there's so many of these. Whoever did this first is like, oh, that'll catch attention. And then everyone caught on. Where did I get this from? Um, now I'm gonna put it back in the wrong spot. I read this entire book last night on Kindle. I think it's worth buying again, but there's one section that I found really helpful at the beginning and probably propelled me to read the whole thing. And it said, amateurs are not afraid to make mistakes or look ridiculous in public. They're in love, so they don't hesitate to do work that others think of as silly or just plain stupid. The stupidest possible creative act is still a creative act, writes Clay Shirkia in his book, Cognitive Surplus. On the spectrum of creative work, the difference between the mediocre and the good is vast. Mediocrity is, however, still on the spectrum. You can move from mediocre to good in increments. The real gap is between doing nothing and doing something. Amateurs know that contributing something is better than contributing nothing. That. That's what I lost. So I managed to find some haggis over at Marks and Spencer, something that we used to have in Paris and sadly no longer do. Not thrilled about that, but I, got, I came back and, and looked around and discovered that I don't actually have 
uh, any of the stuff I need to, to make haggis. I, I, didn't know, I don't know how to make haggis. I asked my Scottish friends. They said if I made it wrong, I would die. Okay, specifically Adam said that if I made this wrong, I would die. And Adam does exaggerate sometimes. However, it's not really a risk that I'm willing to take. So um, I guess I know what I'm doing for brunch tomorrow. If you want to see me eat haggis, I guess there's one restaurant in London that Craig, another Scottish friend, told me about, and he said that it was actually worth going to. Oh. I'm gonna, I'll bring this back for you, Adam. Craig, if you want one, I got two of them, so you can have the other one. When I started vlogging, especially when I was vlogging daily, I, I had hopes. I, I, I would be lying if I said I didn't dream that it went somewhere, but at the same time, I was doing it for fun with no real pressure, nobody watching, and that was something that I, I, I wasn't embarrassed by how bad I was, basically. And I've kind of put too much pressure on myself in the last few years, especially, to level up in a way that probably isn't fully reasonable. And it's robbed the process of the fun. So. Part of it's getting back to amateurism, just doing the things that I do for the love of it, purely for the love of it, and having a grand old time. And on the North Star side, I think I'm getting close. We'll talk about that soon. But it ties into dreams in particular, and the goals that fall down below them, and the ways in which that I've just kind of let go of my dreams over the last few years. It's gonna be a good, we're gonna have a good run. I think everything's gonna change this year. And I'm really, I'm not even scared to say that. Let's, let's go. Cheers to today's Patreon producer, Jennifer Dixie, one of my newest patrons. Because speaking of goals, I'd like to set some new goals for Patreon. There's a lot of fun stuff to come. Speaking of my patrons, I thought it'd be way easier to find haggis in London than it turned out to be. Uh, thankfully, not impossible. I figured it out. I have it on good authority you guys are the place for haggis. Is that true? Nobody warned me that they, A, would make it in a toasty, or B, it would taste this good. I'm really glad I did not make this in my Airbnb by myself. This is superior. If you want to make me eat more unexpected and possibly strange foods, I'm doing this because my patrons voted for it. Many of them thinking that it was going to be a horrible experience. It is not a horrible experience. Be sure to join my Patreon at patreon.com slash jswanson. A lot of really fun stuff coming over there, including old vlogs, like old ones nobody's seen from before I was even daily vlogging. If you'd like to see some really cringy old stuff, it's on his way. Oh, hot.